for posing the question, and uh, I appreciate her, her yielding. I will yield back to her in a moment. But first, just to say that I appreciate her working with me over the last couple of years on this legislation. Uh, this is the kind of legislation we ought to be doing around here because it has a lot of benefits. It reduces our trade deficit. It helps encourage job creation, and it actually makes our environment cleaner. Um, I think it can be helpful in a renaissance for our manufacturing here in America. It's called the Energy Savings and Industrial Competitiveness Act. Um, I also want to thank the ranking member and chair of the Senate Energy Committee, that's Senator Wyden and, and Senator Murkowski, for their consistent support of this legislation. Uh, we got it through the committee with a strong vote, and we're hoping to get it through the floor when we come back in September with a strong vote. I'm told this is going to be the first substantive energy bill on the floor since 2007. Uh, about time. And uh, I hope that it will have support uh, from both sides of the aisle, and I know it has support on both sides of the Capitol. Uh, it's going to help job creators all over the country. It's the right thing to do. On this side of the aisle, we focus a lot on an all of the above energy strategy. We believe we ought to be producing more energy, particularly domestic sources of energy in the ground here in America, uh, and I support that strongly. Uh, we also, though, talk about embracing smart, economically viable policies that let us use less energy, so producing more and using less. There's a lot of focus uh, on producing more, but less on this part about using less, and so that's what this bill does. It's supported by more than 250 businesses, trade associations, advocacy groups, the National Association of Manufacturers, the Sierra Club, the Alliance to Save Energy, the United States Chamber of Commerce. So it's a, it's a group that doesn't normally come together to support legislation. They like this bill because, again, it has these benefits for the environment, but also benefits for the economy and for our energy policy in this country. It passed the Energy Committee with a strong bipartisan vote of 19 to 3. Simply put, uh, Senator Shaheen and I have a bill here that I think makes good environmental sense, it makes good economic sense, and it makes good energy sense. I visit with businesses and job creators all over Ohio, and they tell me pretty much the same thing. They're competing in a global marketplace. Uh, they're competing with companies in Indiana, but also in India. And their ability to compete depends on their costs. They go up against companies in countries where the cost to produce goods tends to be lower. We're never going to compete on wages in developing countries, nor should we. Uh, we're not going to be able to reduce the quality of our goods, nor should we. We want to be sure we're not cutting corners. One thing we can do is reduce the cost to our manufacturers on energy, because it's a big input, particularly with heavy manufacturing. This enables us to do that through energy efficiency technologies. What we can do as the federal government, through research, through disseminating best practices, through supporting skills training, is help the private sector develop the energy efficiency techniques of the future. We can make it easier for them to use efficiency tools to reduce their costs, which enables them to put those savings toward expanding their companies and hiring more people. The proposals contained in the bill are common sense reforms we've needed for a long time. The bill has no mandates on anyone in the private sector. In fact, many of our proposals come as a direct result of our conversations we've had with people in the private sector about how the federal government can best help them to become more energy efficient, save money, and create more jobs by reinvesting in their businesses and communities. Here's a brief overview of what the legislation does. First, it helps manufacturers by reforming what's called the Advanced Manufacturing Office. This is an office at the Department of Energy. We need to provide clear guidance to this office that its responsibilities ought to include and ought to be prioritized to help manufacturers develop energy-saving technology for their businesses. Frankly, they've gotten a little bit off track and have focused more on helping manufacturers of clean energy, which other departments and agencies do, including at DOE. This office ought to be focused on energy-saving technology. It also requires the Department of Energy to assist with on-site efficiency assessments for manufacturers. It facilitates the already existing efforts of companies around the country to implement cost-saving energy efficiency policies by streamlining the way the government agencies in this area work together. And it increases partnerships with national labs, the national laboratories, which are a great source of research and technology, and energy service and technology providers together to leverage private sector expertise toward energy efficiency goals. The legislation also strengthens model building codes so that builders and states that choose to adopt them will have the most up-to-date, energy-efficient building codes that are available. Again, no mandates, but best practices. It also establishes university-based building training and assessment centers, building on existing industrial assessment centers located around the country. There happens to be one in Dayton, Ohio, that does a great job. We want to make sure that they can also do energy efficiency work. These centers will help train the next generation of workers in energy-efficient commercial design and operation through this legislation. 
Not only will these programs save energy, but they also help provide our students and unemployed workers with the skills they need to compete in what can be a growing field, which is the energy efficiency field. Again, this bill is not about forcing companies to become more energy efficient or imposing mandates. It's about giving these companies the help they're asking for. And we can do that at no additional expense to the taxpayer because the cost of this legislation under our bill is fully offset. In fact, uh, I believe this bill will save the American people a bunch of money. Why? Because the legislation takes on the largest user of energy in the world, and that's the United States government. The federal government needs to practice what it preaches by requiring it in this bill to adopt energy savings techniques that make its operations more efficient and less wasteful, we're doing just that. The bill directs DOE to issue recommendations that employ energy efficiency on everything from computer hardware to operation and maintenance processes, energy efficiency software, power management tools. It also takes common sense steps of allowing the General Services Administration to update building designs that are out there. Some have been out there for years. Uh, they develop these designs over time they're going to be permitted finally to update these efficiency standards, again, with the latest energy efficiency technology. The government's been looking for places to tighten its belt. This is certainly one. Energy efficiency is a darn good place to start. All this adds up to a piece of legislation that Americans across the spectrum can support. It's fully offset, contains no mandates in the private sector, requires the federal government to become more efficient. According to a recent study of our legislation and its impacts, by 2020, Using the tools of Shaheen Portman, the private sector can create 80,000 new jobs, lower CO2 emissions by the equivalent of taking 5 million cars off the road, and save consumers $4 billion a year in reduced energy costs. A vote on the Energy Savings and Industrial Competitiveness Act is one more step toward achieving the goal of a true all-of-the-above energy policy that produces more energy at home while using less. I urge my colleagues to support it. And again, I want to commend my colleague from New Hampshire for working with us on this. And I yield back to her after having answered her question. I assume your question, Senator Portman, is will this bill pass the Senate? Will this bill pass the Senate is the question that I pose to my colleague from New Hampshire. And I would say absolutely it will pass the Senate. And it will do that because it